welcome, 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 welcome. And this is going to be a very uh, brief scope, brief teaching. And um, I'm going to just go ahead and open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable to you, Lord, because you are my strength and my redeemer. And so, Father, I thank you for this time before your people. I pray, God, that I would say something that would bring clarity um, to them and bring clarity about their place in life and their purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. So I pray that you all are having a wonderful evening. Thank you to uh, the replay viewers who will watch. Um, pray that you would also um, give hearts on the replay. And tonight I want to talk about something that I feel like as a leader and as someone who has been a follower, many people are afraid to ask. And the reason why I say this, welcome Apostle, uh, swipe and invite your followers if you would please. Um, the reason why I say that this is one of those questions that I feel like many people are too afraid to ask in terms of leadership is because I get so many people inboxing me um, to pray for them in regards to this particular topic that I'm going to delve into in just a moment. So um, tonight's topic is, um, if you would swipe and invite your followers. The uh, topic tonight is leadership, the question that too many are afraid to ask. Um, a lot of times we talk about um, being a good follower, but we don't necessarily tell people or counsel them on what to do when you are being a good follower and you're not necessarily being led by a good leader. Um, and so the question comes up quite a bit. Um, and this is, you know, something that I've prayed with people about um, who actually do want to be mentored. They do want to be held accountable. Um, and they don't want to bring or be dishonorable right and so the question then from them becomes what do you do when you desire to be mentored or you desire to be uh, held accountable and the very person who is overseeing you or leading you is the person that is causing the trauma in your life or it's the person that it seems as if they're in attack mode as opposed to mentor mode or opposed to discipleship mode. And of course, we know that part of that answer can be found in the scriptures. You know, if you look at um, 2 Samuel, you look at 1 Samuel, you look at the relationship that David had with Saul, I would say that that would probably be your best example, a very classic example of... Um, being in a place where he should have been, right? David should have been, uh, by all reasonable accounts, he should have been mentored by Saul because Saul was the very first king that God instituted. So David should have been able to uh, be under Saul, to learn about kingship, to learn about uh, royalty to learn about these different things to learn how to carry himself right as a king but instead David finds himself being chased for 13 years okay and I do a whole teaching series on um, the life of a fugitive worshiper worshiping God while you're on the run but um, so we look at David's life and you say David is supposed to be in a position to be mentored, right? Or to be groomed for kingship. But rather than being groomed for kingship, he actually spends most of his years on the run with his mighty men. He spends those years um, 
going from cave to cave, hiding out from Saul. And so where is the time really for David to develop himself as a king? And so when I look out and I see leaders who may seem immature or they may seem under underdeveloped, we've also got to go back and say, what kind of leader were they under? What kind of leadership were they under? Were they getting the proper grooming? Were they getting the proper training? Were they getting the proper undergirding? Or were they in a situation where, you know, they may have been under antagonistic leadership or they may have been under a jealous leader or an envious leader who chose not to pour into them the things that needed to be poured into them. And so I just want to leave you for those who are questioning, you know, what are you supposed to do when the person who's leading you is not fulfilling their responsibility of pouring into you? What do you do? Okay. There's three things that you can take away from the life of David. And again, like I said, if you read first Samuel and second Samuel, um, one of the scriptures that kind of stuck out to me was second Samuel chapter one, verse 27. And it really is that take that picks up right after, um, Saul goes to war and he is defeated and his son, Jonathan as well is killed. David says these words. He says, how are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? And as I began to think about that, I began to think about the fact that Saul spent the time that he could have been spent, he could have spent grooming David. He actually spent going on all of these different chases chasing the person he was supposed to be grooming. And then he also got caught up in unnecessary warfare, unnecessary warfare. But David still calls him and ends his life by calling him a mighty man. So some of the things you can learn from the life of David, there's three things I want to focus on. When you find yourself in a situation where you're under a leader or you're, you're in a leadership that may not be supportive of your call or may not be supportive of what God is calling you to do. The first thing you need to do is remain calm, remain calm. I know that that can be hard, especially when you have a, a leader like Saul, in this case with David, he was, um, threatening. He sent people to kill him. Um, he made sure everyone in the land knew that he was after David and, um, anybody who stood in support of David, he murdered them. You know, if he came upon them, you're talking about, um, the priests that helped David and that gave David, uh, Goliath's sword during this time when he was in the wilderness so he would have something to protect himself with once Saul uh, caught up with those priests and found out that David had been there he had the, all the priests murdered and so um, the first thing you want to do is you want to remain calm remain calm even in the midst of someone coming against you or someone persecuting you you need to remain calm. You need to recognize that God is the one who is in control. No matter what that person thinks or says or does, God is still in control of the situation. Okay? He's still in control. You don't need to take matters or you don't need to take vengeance into your own hands. Number two, you need to remain honorable, remain honorable. That means, and like I said today in one of my social media posts, if a person is operating in something that is dirty, if a person is operating and they are um, not of God, you don't need to get your hands dirty by being uh confrontational by doing a tit for tat by 
attacking them the way they're attacking you, right? So the second thing is you need to remain honorable. In all the things that happened between David and Saul, there were a couple of times where David was pretty much letting Saul know that if I wanted to harm you, I could have done so, right? And there was even one time where David's conscience smote him because uh, some of his men basically got in his ear and tried to be and tried to spiritualize getting revenge on Saul. But David had to come back and say, who am I to touch or lay hands on God's anointed? Why? Because what David was going to sow, David was also going to reap. And so even when the person may be acting or responding in a dishonorable way, if you sow honor, you're going to reap honor. If you sow dishonor, you're going to reap dishonor. And so again, it comes back to what is your reaction and what is your response regardless of what is coming against you. So number one, remain calm. Number two, remain honorable. Number three, remain in purpose. Remain in purpose. Don't allow what is coming against you through a leader don't allow it to get you off course. Don't allow it to get you off purpose. Because regardless of how that leader felt, regardless of how Saul felt about David, whether he saw him as a threat to his kingdom, the reality was God had already established a prophetic word that said that David would rule as king one day. He had already been anointed. He was actually anointed three different times. He was anointed um, in front of his brothers. He was anointed, I believe, for part of the kingdom of Israel. And then again, once he had uh, rulership over the entire kingdom. So it really didn't matter. Saul's judgment of David did not matter in the long run, right? Because God had already established David's purpose. So if someone is coming against you in a negative way, you have to remain in purpose and not allow that negativity and not allow that attack to throw you off course from where God has said that you are to go. So the three things we're talking about tonight, the question comes to me several times and I've prayed people through this. Uh, what do you do? when you're trying to be mentored and you're trying to be held accountable to your leader, yet your leader is the one who is attacking you. The leader who is supposed to be grooming you is the one who's actually coming against you. So the first thing we talked about is remain calm. Don't allow what is happening to throw you off course emotionally, spiritually, mentally. Don't allow it to get you off course. Number two, remain honorable. Remain honorable because you're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow. Therefore, what you sow cannot be contingent upon what that person is doing. What you sow has to be contingent upon your understanding that you're going to reap what you sow. You're not going to reap what they sow. You're going to reap what you sow. And number three, remain in purpose. Don't stop doing what God has called you to do. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where, you know, you feel like you cannot talk to that leader or you cannot um, confide in that leader because of the that spirit that may be upon them of Saul, pray, ask God to, to set a multitude of counselors around you. But I would also say in that to um, not disparage the character of the person who may be coming against you. God may release you from that leadership. And of course, you would do that with prayer. But even in God releasing you from leadership or oversight, make sure, again, that you are sowing honor because you don't have to leave a leadership in dishonor. You don't have to disconnect yourself in a dishonorable way. And unfortunately, 
um, in the body of Christ too many times that does happen. So the other side of this coin is what if you're the leader who's dealing with this jealousy? What if you're the leader who's dealing with the insecurity? What if you're the leader who sees the person who's supposed to replace you, but you have a problem with it, right? You might be the leader that says, um, I don't want to let go or I don't want to groom them. Well, my advice to you would be to let go and to groom them. Because if you don't, the reality is when your time and when your season is up, then God will move on without you and you won't have a legacy in the future because of the attitude or the behaviors that you're exhibiting now and choosing to partake in. So to me, I see it as a wake up call, whether you are a follower or whether you are a leader to make sure that you are doing what God has called you to do. If you're a leader, pour into those that are under you, groom those who are under you. Um, don't harbor what you are supposed to be pouring out. If you have people under you that, that are your sons and that are your daughters, do the work. Don't just allow them to languish without being poured into. Um, it's very important that as a leader, if you're going to take on that responsibility, that you too will be held accountable for what you did or did not pour into the people that were under you, that you were supposed to disciple. God is going to hold us accountable for the souls that he has given us oversight and care of. As a follower, again, remain calm, remain honorable, remain in your purpose. So I pray that this um, has been helpful to you. I pray that you would share it. Um, and I pray that you would, would consider doing exactly what the word encourages us to do. Um, I know one of my uh, ministry co-laborers earlier today, she did a uh, um, Periscope, I believe, or uh, Facebook Live on honor. It is so important in the body of Christ that we begin to restore honor to these offices. It's hugely important important and imperative to restore honor to these offices. No, you may not always agree with a person or their leadership. You may not, you may even clash with their leadership style, but that doesn't mean that you have to be dishonorable. If they're not operating in heresy, if they're not doing something ungodly, if they're not leading people in the way of hell, then honor them honor them. Another gentleman today um, on Periscope, and, and I'm actually going to take him at his word on what he suggested. I do it anyway, but I'm going to really, really, really push it um, in the month of May. And that is exposing the good, exposing the good. I'm going to be going through my friends list and I'm going to be looking for people who have businesses who have ministries and I'm going to be every day. I'm going to try to expose the good of at least one to two people through my social media, promote them, honor them, bless them, thank them, uh, tell them what they have meant to my life personally and encourage people to support their work, whether it's ministry, whether it's a business idea, um, whether it's, you know, cause I know some people who are missionaries to support, you know, their missions, trips and different things like that, but I'm going to be more intentional about doing it coming this month of May. So I am, uh, going to participate and take that challenge of exposing the good, exposing the good. We have so many different capabilities with this thing called social media, and we need to take greater advantage of it by doing good, by exposing good, by putting good out in the world. So I pray that you were blessed tonight by this message. Um, it is a question, like I said, that many people are afraid to ask. Um, many people 
are feeling very oppressed by their leadership. And that just should, to me, that just should not be so. Um, so I wanted to take time to come and address it in a video and hopefully um, it will help not only those who have been uh, seeking prayer for this, this particular thing, but I hope it will help other people in general. So pass this on and uh, take care. Have a great evening and God bless.